It's the landmark that defines our city. Fort Vancouver is full of history, and today, it's also full of inquisitive young minds from Vancouver iTech Preparatory. They're turning real history into virtual reality. Teacher John Zingale tweeted out, It's official. iTech Prep and Fort Vancouver are partnering to bring social studies and STEM together using VR. I'm Nick Vole, and I'm scouring social media for the best posts about what's happening in Vancouver Public Schools. This is VPS Success. Middle schoolers from iTech are on a working field trip. They're not just observing history, they're documenting it by taking 360 degree photos of every square inch of the fort. This is the final product, a virtual reality tour. It's the brainchild of Mr. Zingali. Um, this project started uh, well, a little bit over a year ago um, when I came across these uh, 360 cameras and I just figured out, God, they're so cool. And uh, as a social studies educator, I was like, okay, how can we use these? And um, be teaching Washington State history um, and really wanted to focus in on local history for our students, um, I approached the fort a little over a year ago and uh, showed them kind of what we might be able to do and they were kind of they were really excited um, because nothing like this has ever been done before. The fort is run by the National Park Service. It seems like connecting your educational mission to their educational mission is kind of a perfect fit. Exactly. We love partnerships like that in the National Park Service. It brings the power of, of a national park together with uh, educational uh, purposes and um, allows us to everybody to actually accomplish a broader mission that way. Today's photo shoot is just one step in a longer lesson for students. I'm actually an archaeologist by training, and we actually did a lot of lessons with them on thinking like an archaeologist and what specific artifacts or objects that people use can tell you about people of the past. So we wanted them to concentrate on that. So not only are they doing uh, videos of interior spaces in a lot of these buildings, but they're honing in on specific objects in these interior spaces. And oftentimes these objects, they just kind of blend into the mix if you're visiting this space. But by being able to actually you know, zoom in and talk about this specific object, you're gonna learn a lot more about you know, specific artifacts. And again, telling a broader story about who lived here, what they did, and why they were here. Um, what's nice about today is there are people here that can help, if they still had some questions, they can ask more directed questions and find out more about a specific uh, instrument or tool or something like that today. Okay. So really diving into the, the guts of the project. For today's shoot, the fort brought in its volunteers, many dressed in historical clothing and playing a character to assist the kids. Well, this was a big operation. There were maybe as many as a thousand people living around the fort at one time. They had huge farms, they had a sawmill, they had a grist so mill. So is the fort how it is right now, smaller than it was? No, it's exactly the way it was. It's, wow. it's exactly, they went and, did, and dug up parts of the fort and they've been able to find exactly where the buildings were. There's a mock-up of it in the uh, contact center. In fact, it's so accurate that they knew the store was here and they knew how the way the boards were laid because they found lines of beads that had fallen when they were measuring out beads fell through the cracks and wound up in the dirt and did archaeological digs and found these long lines of colored beads. Mm -hmm. So they know the boards went east-west. So this is an exact replica. So this is one of the cooler buildings at the fort, I think. This is the known as the Barclay Quarters, um, named after the doctor that um, was stationed here for the longest amount of time. His family uh, lived over on that side of the house, but this was the infirmary where they took care of all the sick people um, pretty much throughout the entire Pacific Northwest. Um, and then where he would perform surgery. He has his ledger where he would uh, keep track of his prescriptions. Um, and these are actually real um, medicines that they used to use back in the uh, 1800s. Areas like this here at the Fort, the infirmary, are often unavailable to visitors because of staffing concerns. But with these virtual reality stills they're grabbing, it'll be available all the time online for visitors. It may seem like it's just taking some photos, but getting to this point was not easy. So imagine this, they're taking photos of every inch of this house from the opulent dining quarters here where the officers ate down to the servants area and pantry down below. 
That kind of detail requires organization and specialized gear. To get their 360 degree photos, the students use special cameras. So, so the fisheye lenses have 180 degrees on each side. Put together, that's 360 degree sphere. Yeah. So initially the only thing that you can see is the tripod on the bottom, but you can't see any of the other cameras. It's pretty cool. So then remotely with the iPad, you're telling it to take a picture. Yeah, so each camera has its own Wi-Fi, and once the iPad's connected to the Wi-Fi, um, you can go on to their app and take the picture outside of the room while it's connected. And then it shows you immediately what you just took. Yeah. It's pretty cool. <laughs> this is what a photo looks like, pressed flat into a single image. But in special apps for phones or browsers, you can navigate around the photos. And for the greatest impact, you can use virtual reality products like Google Cardboard, which turns smartphones into VR goggles. Those work sort of like 3D glasses at the movies. The image is tweaked slightly and sent separately to each eye. Your brain combines the two sides into one, creating a three-dimensional image. It's the same thing your eyes do with real life. With VR apps, you can look up, down, left, or right and see exactly what you'd see if you were really there. I think um, the wonderfulness of this project is being able to actually discuss technologies of the 19th century by using technologies of the 21st century and again bring that to a broader uh, audience using the internet. The main piece of this is obviously we want the students to learn about the fort and our local history and learn how, to, how the process of research goes. But to me, the most valuable thing in this is that we're going to be creating something for the world. Um, so while our fourth graders may be able to use this technology in their classroom when they're learning about the fort, anyone in the world will be able to take a virtual reality tour of the fort and learn about Vancouver and how it was the epicenter for trade and living on the West Coast for a long time. Um, as, we, as the country was expanding, this was the most populous city. Um, it had it was the most diverse population, which rivaled that of Paris and New York. But n not a lot of people know that. And so we need to be able to communicate that. And we want people to go to parks too. How does it make you feel to know that this project you're working on is gonna be available to people all over the world and for a really long time? Honestly, kinda scared, because your work's going out to the world. You, you gotta give it your best and hope that they like it. <laughs> When the project is finished this spring, you can see it for yourself. Check out the Fort's website, www.nps.gov slash FOVA. So that's National Park Service, nps.gov slash Fort Vancouver, FOVA. Here are some more great tweets about Vancouver Public Schools using the hashtag VPS Success. This one comes from teacher Luis Castro and it's simply titled Bunny Hop. Sarah Nelson posted this photo on Instagram, I hate to brag but my kids are darling. She's right. These photos came from the 25th annual Patty Hauk Parade, which is put on by Hauk Elementary. You can see the parade in its entirety on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash vanSDTV. Next time you see something amazing happening in Vancouver Public Schools, post it to social media and use the hashtag VPS Success. It's an easy way to share all of the ways our students, parents, and staff are making our schools a great place to learn. Until next time, I'm Nick Vole.